Lindsay, Barbara Isola here. Thank you so much for coming into the frying pan. I really appreciate it. Um, I guess I should say hi to other folks who are outside of Quincy because now we're on YouTube and I have a YouTube channel thanks to my dear editor, uh, publicist, and uh, daughter, Catherine McAloon. Um, so I'm on YouTube and I wanted just to explain a little bit before we start cooking um, about how Into the Frying Pan started. It was back in 2007. Our son, Robert, was going off to college and my husband and I decided that when Catherine goes to college two years after that, we needed to have a shared interest. We needed to be doing things. I mean, we did things, but you know, you spend your energy raising your kids, right? So we decided we should have a hobby that we could do together and so we decided to create a cable cooking show. And we went down to our local cable station, QATV, and the folks there were just so lovely. Uh, Bill Early, who does the education there, taught us what to do to make the show. And so that's where we are. So I have a whole bunch of shows that are not on YouTube. Uh, the premise always was that somebody would be cooking with me, but right now we can't do that. Um, we have a show on the uh, channel with uh, me making risotto with our son. That was before the uh, quarantine. So here we are, and I thought I would make for you um, flounder. And I love flounder. Now, I didn't know that people, I guess people don't want to cook fish in their house because it smells. Um, I don't think it really smells that bad. This is gorgeous, gorgeous flounder that I bought at our local fish store. And it, it, it doesn't smell because it's fresh and it's beautiful and it's been handled properly. So I grew up in a Catholic house and we couldn't eat fish on Friday. So this was one of my favorite things that my mom would make. I mean, sometimes we'd have chowder, with um, cheese, uh, melted cheese sandwiches. But our chowder, okay, all you New England people, put your fingers in your ears because we had Manhattan clam chowder. I'll tell you something, I love all things New York and I am so, um, I think New York has really great pizza and bagels. Manhattan clam chowder, not so good. Um, okay, I said it, but I, I mean it. and. The first time I had New England clam chowder, I kind of felt like the heavens opened up and the angels were singing, like those old movies with the song of Bernadette. And, uh, okay, so I love New England clam chowder. Okay, but I digress. So my mom would always say, we're going to have filet of flounder. And my sister recently con um, confessed that when my mom was saying we're having filet, she would shorten it. My sister thought that the name of the fish was filet. I'm sure she'll love me telling that story. Um, but it, it's really kind of cute and it's, it's, it's a fun thing. So um, this is actually one of Tim's favorite meals and I'm gonna just show you how to bread it and fry it so that it's golden and crispy and not oily and your house doesn't smell. So you open the windows and if it does smell afterwards, you light a candle, but that's another story. Okay, so my husband calls these fish cutlets and it makes me laugh every time. I don't know why, but he's like, can we have fish cutlets? Like, what are you talking about? But he wanted the flounder filet. So there's really a method that you could do for your veal cutlets, your chicken cutlets, uh, pork cutlets, whatever, where you're going to, um, do three steps, okay? I probably don't need two eggs, but I'm, I'm gonna crack them just in case. I'm gonna take my eggs and kinda lift them. And I'm gonna put just a drop of water in there, okay? You don't need a lot. Just put a little bit. That's it. Probably doesn't do anything, but it makes me happy. Okay, that's that. Then I'm going to take breadcrumbs, the dried breadcrumbs that you buy in your supermarket. 
Um, I like the, well, never mind, I forgot to get something to get them out. Um, I usually use the flavored ones. So here they are, and this can be our last step. So we're gonna put them in there. So what's this, a half cup measure? So maybe a cup. I always put a little more because once your hands get smushy, you don't wanna be um, having to get new breadcrumbs. And then I'm gonna take flour, and I'm gonna put flour here. You don't need a lot of flour, okay? So there's that. Okay. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna season it with salt and pepper, the flour. And I'll put a little in the breadcrumbs, even though they're flavored. I don't like to put it in the egg because, I don't know, it just, I don't like how it is in the egg, but that's okay. You can put pepper in the egg. Pepper. And I think I mentioned on one of the other shows, when um, you have your pepper mill, when you have nothing to do, grind the pepper and count how many turns it is to make a teaspoon. So then if you're reading a recipe, you know how many to do. So it really has served me well. Okay, now what I want you to do is take the fish and we're gonna just sprinkle it with a little salt on both sides. All right? And you don't have to be too crazy about it. There we go. And the last one. Okay. So now we're going to start breading. If you read books or if you watch um, cooking shows, fancy ones, um, not, not like this one, um, they'll tell you to leave one hand wet and one hand dry. I try to do that and I usually fail. So if you could do that, that's great. So I guess this would be my dry hand, but you know what? I'm just doing it the way I always do it. So what we wanna do is take a fish, a piece of fish, and put it in the flour, and you don't want a lot of flour, okay? So we really want to knock the flour off, and we're gonna put it in the egg, and have a little assembly line going. Okay, let's do this. And then into the breadcrumbs, get the egg, let it drip off, because you don't want, if you don't let it drip off really, you'll get these clumps of breadcrumbs and that's not good, okay? So here we go, I didn't mix this around, let's do that. There we go, and when you put it in the breadcrumbs, I want you really to push on the cutlet, okay? so that it will adhere. There we go. Excellent. So there's one. And here's another one. Now you could do this in advance, but not that far in advance, because then the, um, the uh, breading will get a little bit um, soggy. It gets funny. So, I mean, I've done it maybe an hour before and put it in the fridge, but I wouldn't push it longer than that. So, um, oh, you know what? I wanted to say hi to Jim Gaffigan because I know he's probably watching this. I, I think he watches my show. So I just figured I'd say hi to him too. But, okay, so I'm gonna do a couple more. We could do these pretty fast. You can see how fast this goes. Now, when I serve this, usually what I'll do is make like a nice salad. And you know when you go to a, 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 an Italian restaurant and you order uh, like chicken milanese or veal milanese, it comes with that beautiful salad on top. Um, you could do this with this and it really, really, it's just a really good meal. Makes, makes me feel good, I love it. So, here we go. And I have one more cutlet. And I'm just gonna move the paper. Put this, and we're gonna get ready to fry. 
I'll finish doing these later. So I'm sure you don't want to watch me do the last two. So I have three done. And look, it's like totally schmutzy hands. If I would have done the wet dry thing, I would have been good. But you know what? No big deal. What usually happens if you're expecting a phone call and you're really wanting it to come, bread fish or cutlets or anything like that or eggplant and get your hands really good and smushy like that and I guarantee you the phone will ring. All right? Just a little tip. All right, so here's the breaded cutlets. Man, do they look good. Well, they will be good when they're uh, cooked. Cook. So now let's go to the stove. I don't know what, that really doesn't happen. I don't know what happened there. And um, we'll get that warm. And we're gonna put oil in. How much? I don't know. I mean, you don't want, I put more than most people because I think it fries up beautifully. So maybe that was a half cup of oil, maybe a little less. So let's get it warm. And we'll, you don't want it to be smoking, but it needs to be hot enough that the breading um, doesn't get, um, like that it'll start to cook right away. You know what I'm saying? So while, while we're waiting for that to heat up, I might as well finish these two, right? So, okay. Now, um, I like to serve these with lemon wedges. Um, if you like tartar sauce, go for it. Um, I don't know why. I like tartar sauce on fish, but not necessarily um, this one. So when you make your fish cutlets, um, you'll decide. Some people even like ketchup on them, and that's great. Uh, you know, I think people should eat what they like, and there's no shame in it. So, okay, there we go. Again, I did it again. So, all right, let's go to the frying pan here. And here we have the fish. Now, I have it on pretty high. I'm going to lower it. And I'm going to put the fish in. Let's see. You can take some of this and kind of test it. Yeah, that looks good. It's starting to sizzle. Then put them in. Do not crowd the frying pan because then it won't fry properly. Okay. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can. It smells It's really pretty good. So I'm going to come back in a minute and we will, I'll show you how the fish is supposed to look. Okay. See you in a minute. All right. So I want you to get a look at the fish. It's been in there a couple of minutes and um, we're going to look underneath it to see how we're doing. This does not take long. Oh, look, it's getting really nice. Now what I did was I lowered the heat, all right? And that's kind of important when you're frying things. Don't do it really high because it will burn. And what I do is, I know my um, stove has a hot spot. It seems to be warmer in the back. I don't know why, but it is. So I'm gonna look underneath. We're getting there. And we're going to flip it. Sometimes I like to use two spatulas. It makes it easier so that the oil doesn't go all over the place. What do you think? That looks pretty good. Right? These are thin, so they're not going to take very long. Okay. I'm going to make it a little higher to so get a little more color. And um, let them go for a while. I don't smell fish, do you? Does anyone smell fish? No. I don't think you do. Because it doesn't smell like fish. Um, so, let's see what they look like. 
underneath. Let's see if I could show you from this camera angle. Now, you don't want to flip them twice because that's how things start to taste greasy. Okay? Patient, sing a song, do a dance, whatever you'd like. Beautiful. So this one's a little darker, as you can see, but they they both really, they all really look good. So. I have a few more shows up my sleeve that I want to do. I haven't decided yet um, what the next one will be, but if you have any suggestions, um, you can reach me on, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Facebook, and I would answer your messages, so. I guess, I don't know, can you talk to me on YouTube? I should probably know that, right? All right, this one's ready to go. I have paper towels ready to drain them. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Maple leaf, I didn't do that, okay? The pen is getting get flipped twice. And there we are. So I'm gonna put them on a platter with some nice lemon wedges and we are really gonna enjoy them with dinner. I think I have some leftover cucumber salad that I made the other day, and uh, that's what we're gonna have with them. So thank you so much for coming into the frying pan. I hope you come back, and uh, we'll see you soon.